Welcome everyone to Mastery's Meet the Mentor with Olaf Schneider. My name's Desley Stewart. I'm an Australian artist working mainly in pastel. And I'm excited to be chatting with Olaf from the other side of the world today. I want to thank everyone for joining us today and let you know that Olaf welcomes your questions and your comments. This video is going to be available on the Mastery's YouTube channel. So if you don't feel comfortable speaking in person, then just put your questions in the chat and I'll read them out for you. Um, I'm also going to be navigating, so that's facilitating, Olaf's brand new mentoring group when it begins. So today I'll introduce Olaf, then he's going to share a presentation with us and describe how joining his mentoring group can help you reach your artistic goals. So here I go, I'm going to read out a little bit about Olaf, just to put you in the picture. Olaf creates his work in acrylics, oils and pastels and believes that art is a celebration of life. He's worked as a mural artist, a billboard painter and now as a fine artist and his work is held in private, corporate and museum collections. He's an award-winning artist who's held numerous solo and group exhibitions and he's been featured in many artist magazines. A prolific painter, he's best known for his high realism style of painting. For Olaf, each work represents an exploration of beauty, form and light, and composition, colour and craftsmanship are the building blocks of his work. He believes that if a painting could, for a moment, capture the attention and awareness of the viewer through visual harmony, carry on a dialogue, and bring the viewer further than the call of the senses to a timeless state, then that work has approached the realm of art and the realm of life. And with that wonderful inspirational thought, I would like to welcome Olaf. Welcome, Olaf. Hello. Thank you so very much, Desley. It's a pleasure to be here today. It's nice a, to it's meet you. It's a pleasure you. to be chatting to you. Yes. Um, mm. So let's start with just a couple of questions sure. before you share your presentation. Uh, and then I do have a few questions that if we have time, we can get to at the end, but you may just answer them on your way through with the presentation. Okay. So here we go. Let's begin. Um, so our first question is, can you tell us what it is that you love to paint? So what kind of subject matter are you drawn to? Well, right now on my easel, I'm working on a portrait of a, an Indigenous child dancing because mm -hmm. the emotion and the color uh, mostly the emotion has drawn me into this image um, it's my second time working on this image but I've changed it up a little bit and it made it much bigger mm -hmm. the first time I made a small one and, and uh, I had a good time doing that so now I'm doing a larger one to fit the Fantastic. frame that I happen to have hanging so I'm excited so you about said that. it was the emotion behind the image Yes, the emotion, the emotion of the, the child's face, of the whole the atmosphere of the painting and the colors. Wonderful. So um, you have worked in, your, the, your work is epic, it's large scale. Uh, you've worked in murals. Um, can you tell people what they can expect from a mentoring group with you? I have a variety of experience in different as aspects of painting, whether it's large or regular canvas, studio canvas sizes, um, problem solving, where to start, how to begin, how to get the background on, where to begin, how to get all the details in there, and then what to do when I'm in the middle of the picture and I'm sort of stuck and I have a, an issue that I can't work out, and things like that, problem solving, shipping, marketing, um, asking questions, trying to get more inspiration, photography, uh, reproduction, transferring, lots of different, uh, uh, 35 years of experience. Experience. No, you make such a good point about problem solving where you get to that point and you think, now what do I do? So that is mm. an excellent uh, point that you're making there and something I'm sure people would love to learn more about. Mm -hmm. So would you like to hop right into your presentation and uh, share sure. your screen with us? Okay, I'll do that right now. Here we go. There's a bunch of them here. So I'll just, this is the very first oil painting I did. 
and wow. um, it's 36 by 48 and it was it was sold at the race to the driver fantastic and so i'm staying really sharp and clean and crisp all the lines and stuff everything is very straight i use masking tape oil paints and continues I could explain everything about each one of these pieces, but I wish you would. <laughs> well, for the sake of time, this the the piece on the right hand side is actual gravel that I sprinkled onto a can onto a, a wooden board right. that that has a gesso, really thick gesso, impasto paste laid over top, and then the the gravel was paint was laid on top. I went outside and just got some gravel from outside from the street. And then once that dried, I painted it gray. And then I took an airbrush and sprayed black underneath so that it gives that really three-dimensional look. Amazing. The emblem on the bottom right corner, I mm -hmm. went to the, Por the Porsche dealership and I bought that emblem and I put it in. So now it almost looks like a billboard. It um, does. I couldn't help it here I took a chance and I started something fresh I've mm -hmm. never been this I've never painted this way before I took a palette knife and I started sp splashing color all over the place this piece is 36 by 60 inches that's three feet by five feet and I entered it into a competition and won first place it's the first time I ever won first place wow. in anything I was so, so happy about that. So you almost have elements of abstraction going on there as well underneath yeah. the tires. So it's I, a different yeah. approach for you. Absolutely. I mean, here, this car looks parked. This one looks parked. But this <laughs> one actually looks like it's moving. Moving, and, exactly. Yes. Yeah. And this is the driver signed this piece. If you look, uh, the oh. Michael Sh Michael Schumacher signed that one. Fantastic. Um, I airbrushed this one. And so the, the detail is a lot different than the oil paintings. This airbrush is something I did long before oil paints. So yeah, this is back to oil painting on a textured surface. You can see the wow. texture underneath. And then I, I took the rims of the tires and continued them on it, just cr trying to create movement. That is so interesting. Oh. How did you create, how did you, I'm looking at the wheel on the left-hand side, how did you create those ovals coming out of the rims? With a uh, compass. And it. So I drew a line, like I had a, a piece of tape that went halfway into the tire, like straight across from the right-hand side, the left and to the right. Draw, mm -hmm. a line, draw a line across and then just continue the circles to the left fantastic yeah it was and there's, it looks to me like you've tried to capture the crowd in the background or... yeah that's just yeah. Very, very abstract very kind of blurry mm. and how how do you decide which piece is going to be high realism and which piece is going to be a bit abstract um <laughs> i don't know this i was experimenting this is my first this is the first year second year painting in oils so mm. this is all complete experiment and with these race cars where i was showing my work i was selling my paintings in a gallery in montreal and montreal is one of the stops for formula one and they were selling my paintings quite frequently and um well the prices were very low <laughs> and the images were so unique mm. and, they and I, are. I was I was trying to please a crowd that were Ferrari fans. And well, you so, certainly captured the movement. <laughs> yeah. So now we're moving on to portraiture. Mm -hmm. This is a little bit more high realism where Beautiful. everything is soft and carefully placed. Mm -hmm. Again, she's dancing, so there's movement and there's a blur happening here in the lower part um I just love it I just love that it's wonderful mm -hmm. and is that a recent one uh a, 
uh, I would say two years, two years, three years ago. That's recent. <laughs> yeah. Another old one, but more tight. And this is a very, re this was last year. What a this fabulous year. concept. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Her, that was only, oopsie, that's a 24 inch by eight, maybe 30. Mm hmm and very small. I struggle with really small. It just makes me absolutely. Can you explain a little bit? That's such a unique idea there. Can you explain a bit about the concept behind that? Yeah, well, they're, they're, I love it. I, um, the, mm. the jacket, like the overcoat and the dog, um, it's fabulous. And, and I, so engaging. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So she was wearing white slippers, but I wanted to make them fluffy and a little different so it made them pink. pop of color mm -hmm. and here's another one and i use a palette knife for all of the tassels mm -hmm. on, on her her regalia wonderful do you work with a model or are you taking images yourself? i take pictures. i take the photos myself i go to the powwows mm -hmm. my daughter-in-law uh lives on a reserve and okay. she invited me to a powwow so actually There's so I, much color and movement going yeah, on mm. i gave her this piece she just loves it mm. okay and this is a commission a friend of mine her daughter beautiful mm. this is a recent one I, it's a pretty large one now that's something really different to what we've seen so far. So yeah, so I did a series of rain pictures. I was asked to do. I was given the opportunity to have an art show, and I had about eight nine months to prepare, mm -hmm. and I had a whole variety of different things. And a friend of mine, he's a designer. He said, "Why don't you just do something on create a subject matter that is unique to you and do a whole bunch of them the same size." And um, it's going to look beautiful. I said, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. So um, I did. Uh, the series was on rain. Okay. Rain can be really fun and very interesting. Mm -hmm. and so I did a bunch of different puddle images and rain. Im You'll see some as we go. A lot of black and white. And it was fun. I had that was so quite tonal. That's right. Yeah, I had so much fun doing it and very mm -hmm. textured and so there's there's a that was oh the wow show, that was the showpiece. Um yeah, that really has captured a moment. <laughs> yeah, so if you look at all the, the detail, mm -hmm. it it looks very abstract up close, but from a distance, it's very so can you describe your process there? So are you putting down just tiny pieces of paint next to each other rather than blending yeah, uh yeah exactly mm -hmm. so i can show you can i show you the step by step no not on this image but i can show you step by step mm -hmm. on let's say this oh one. wow okay so that was one of the questions we had. Do you start with an underpainting? Yeah. So th they call it a grisaille. Mm -hmm. I think that, yeah, that's, so that's the first step right there. Mm -hmm. A tonal painting. Yes. And then you just throw color on top of it. Fantastic. And what's that third step there? Or is that another that's version? The, oh. See, that's the final piece right there. Final. So the first piece is the top left, the, the bottom left, mm -hmm. everything in color except the face. Mm. And then the one on the right-hand side, the face is completely painted in and, yes. and the color is on there. And all the details around the face and you've kept the background quite muted by the look of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just wonderful. Yeah. So that's this one. And here's another process. Um, I don't know which one to show you first. Hmm. Show um, me all of them. 
Here, yeah, no problem. Here's the underpainting for the mm -hmm. river. Right. So you do put a little bit of detail in your underpainting. Like yeah, for me, oh, yeah. It could be a finished piece. <laughs> yeah, as much as I can. Mm -hmm. And then what would your next step be? Just start working so, up so there. Now that I have, yeah, now that I have all the information. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's add some detail. Mm. See? Wonderful. And and looks looks like you're pushing the tones it's, a little bit there. Yeah, it's it's looking almost done, but it's not. Watch this. Ah, <laughs> there you go. Wow. And now that, that's finished. Now that's the last one. So Amazing. All done. So and you feel like you're standing there just looking down on that. That's yeah. a really interesting perspective you've taken. Yeah, the fall colors up here are pretty cool. Mm. This is another one. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I've got the underpainting or the drawing mm. is on there yep. on top of the acrylic. Okay, so you put the color in first. Yeah, because the yellow would mix in with the pencil. Mm -hmm. And here's another one. So this is just the underpainting. That's without, how it begins. <laughs> without the drawing. Mm -hmm. And now I've covered up the 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 red, the yellow and the blue. Right. I'm splashing these this all over it. So is that gravel colors? Just colors, yeah. Just colors. And here on the other side, because there's two images. Okay. This is what it looks like up close. Incredible. I just, I just love that. And from a distance, it looks like gravel. Right. That's the that's the upper part of the painting. Mm -hmm. My my hands and my finger, because I spin a fan brush. Mm -hmm. I take a big fat fan brush and I spin it to create this look. Because then it goes very abstract if you spin it in your finger. Wow. And so my hand got really tired. So I stuck it in the end of a drill. Mm. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and I just made a big mess up at the top here. Stand and back, so, everybody. <laughs> yeah. So now the bottom part, the, the gravel part was finished, but I wanted to add some shadow, which was easy to do. Now I take the tape off. Mm-hmm. And now there's no more mess. Everything's dry. And it's starting to come alive. Fantastic. It certainly is. And then you, you've worked a very high level of realism into the yeah. The front part. And I got to photograph these cars individually. And then through the Photoshop, you know, I was able to put them in place and so each one of these pieces is 36 mm -hmm. by six feet, 36 by 72 inches. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And then when you put them together, it's like a diptych. I see. So that's so, my small. Oh, I see now. Yeah. So you don't work from just one image. You're you're happy to get a couple of images and work oh, yeah. with them in Photoshop till you get the right result. Mm -hmm. fantastic fun huh oh, I so, that's so one, look at that. one big piece of canvas and I put my cut marks here mm -hmm. and each one is 36 by 72 yeah and I've just got a you know these straps strips of wood that keeps the canvas about a half an inch off the, the wall. And the wall is just drywall, right? So. Did you have to create that um, uh, that bracket, especially for the, that painting or do you have yeah, that? Yeah. yeah. I think it was always up there. I don't remember, it's been so long. I've moved. Oh, okay. Two times right. since I was in this studio. Mm -hmm. So that's this one. Um, oh, this one's fun. 
That this is fun. Is, this is one of my favorites that you've this done. Is re, this is recent. This is last August. So this size is six feet by 11 feet. Mm -hmm. And this is the very start. So I prime my canvas with a light blue and I blended it down a light mm -hmm. blue to a very light blue. And then I painted the, the dark blue. And then with an overhead projector, I projected this, the, uh, the drawing. Wow. Just with paint. Just with paint. Wow. How about that? Yeah. So just paint whatever you see. Now, if you look at the tail, so I'm adding more water now. See the blue? Yes. Yes. Okay. Now I'm adding white or a, a lighter shade of light. See? Yes, I can see that happening. Okay, so there. Yep. Now from here, I'm adding some dark. Darks, okay. So you started with a mid-tone, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. So now that I've got that in place, mm -hmm. the water still looks really boring and the splash <laughs> around the bottom half of the whale is kind of incomplete, but now I'm going to spend a bunch of time on all of that detail. Mm. And this and is what it looks like. that. That's how it looks working on it. That whale is as big as you. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and wow. This is the photo I'm using. That's my artwork. That's the printed piece. Mm -hmm. That's the photograph. Okay. I don't even know why that's there, but I don't care. It's there. Yeah. And on the right hand side, I've, I've mixed, you know, just trying to get some colors in there. And matching up the colors a little. Yeah. And is that it? Oh, I think. Yeah. So this is finished, I think. Yeah. This is the finished piece here. Fabulous. In Australia, we just last month, we had the annual migration of the whales from the bottom of Australia to the top of Australia. Oh. And just outside of Sydney is the central coast. And if you're fortunate, you could go and, and spot them off the central coast. So wow. do you have that near where you are? No, out east in Newfoundland, you'll see them. Mm -hmm. And in the wet, at the west coast in British Columbia, you'll see them. Right. But where I live, I'm kind of central, almost, a little bit. Okay. So this is a big wall. That's a really big wall. And that's a scissor lift mm -hmm. that's going to get me up and down and so i've got the drawing the the drawing yeah the drawing is on there it's just really hard yep. to, hard to, to see. see okay and so this is the first color and what are you painting this with an airbrush airbrush okay so you, you're doing a tonal study underneath there yeah And then, then what happens? Oh, oh, what's happening on the right hand side of her there? Just a window, just part of the design. Design, yeah. And you you created that design first? No, that it was all given to right. me. This is artwork the client gave to me. This isn't something that I would do, mm -hmm. but they want. Right. This. They're paying me. Paying. This is an outdoor advertising picture mm -hmm. for, for a, a beer. And she's that that artwork is really popping out of the the wall there. It's very three dimensional. Yeah. So this is getting pretty close to finished. So most of the work is in the bottle. Yes, with the labels and the, and the, the client wants this to look perfect. I mean, mm -hmm. as, as good as you can get it, and that's it. That's the finished. Oh, piece. that's where they want to draw the eye right down to that label. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and they're using this lady to get their, you know, how they use that. Attention, for... yeah, that's right. So let's see, that's that one. Uh, here's a bit of a, here's a cool one. This is fun. Okay, so I painted this one in a studio. This mm -hmm. is 20 feet done on ply on plywood. It's eight eight feet high by 20 feet long. Mm -hmm. uh, this is just part of it. 
So the full length, I'll show you in a minute. So this is just a up close picture of the car, but the right. background was the background was airbrushed somewhere else. I'm at a trade show, uh, mm -hmm. design, the tr interior design show in Toronto, 2004. So I painted the whole canvas gray. Yeah. This color, and then I painted in the background, mm -hmm. and they set the wall up at the trade show in the Mercedes Benz. Uh, trade show booth mm -hmm. and they had the car parked behind me this car that I'm painting there's a the actual car is parked behind me so this is the first night I only had a few hours to get set up and to get started and this so you had to paint not from an image but from the actual car sitting next to you no from a photo I had a oh. photo look at that oh wow <laughs> So that's the 20 feet. That's the whole booth, right? What, so, what is the idea of the background there? It's amazing. But what was the concept of that? That's just, I don't know. something Like the design. road going on top or something. Yeah, something it's they crazy. made. It was part of their web design. I don't know. It was a design. Right. That's all. What are you going to do with a car? You got to put it in something. That's but true. That was a three-day trade show event. And look at my palette and my brushes were rolling all over. <laughs> Speaking of brushes, I understand that you have a bit of a fascination with brushes and you, you're yeah. a bit of a collector. I have lots of brushes. <laughs> so this is it here again. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that. Yeah. Okay. And you've achieved that really high gloss on the side of the car. Yeah, it's just color. It's not glossy. <laughs> it's just the color. Just the way you use color. It looks, it looks glossy, but see, with a with a car like this or any kind of a still life, if the color is wrong, it's wrong. If mm -hmm. the drawing is wrong, it's wrong. Words that were spoken from my my mentor <laughs> back when I was twenty, Olaf. If the drawing is wrong, forget it. Your eye is going to go straight to it, and you can't change it. So and like you, this oval and yes, see the front wheel of the car, yep. the bottom right hand corner right here. Mm -hmm. It's wrong. I just noticed it now. I don't but, see that. But okay. <laughs> yeah. It's a little pointy. Okay. Down at five, six o'clock. Anyways. So. so you mentioned that you had a mentor. Do you still? Yeah, I do. His name is Ron okay. Gray. He so even is, at your level. Yeah, I I'm I haven't made my best picture yet, and okay. I'm far from perfect. There's no such thing as perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, so I invite myself to make mistakes, great big ones. So I learn learn from the consequences, and then I find the lesson and share the lesson, and get ready to make the next mistake. As a matter of fact, a mistake is really a lesson in its work clothes. So okay. um, I like that. Yeah. That's a great quote. Hopefully the mistakes I make don't affect other people. Every now and again they do, but um, yeah, I embrace okay. I embrace the lesson. This and, is a beautiful portrait. Yeah, so see the eyes; they're wrong. Look how they're wrong. See how they look I'm fabulous not, to me. <laughs> not round. The iris is, is wrong, okay. and the the pupil and the iris has to be the same. Okay. Or like nice and round in between a circle inside a circle and they aren't so and how how big is this painting four by eight foot right oh so it's, it's rather it's big yeah or no okay. sorry four by six foot now look so at the big. eyes now they they're wrong i don't it's, see it but if yeah. you say so <laughs> yeah they're not right so what i did was i i i, I started again i got i cleaned them out made them white and started again and now yeah that gorgeous now they're right in other words the circle inside the circle is in the center beautiful now it's easy enough to to darken them up got it and look at the it looks amazing it looks really really wonderful and that's 
So one, two, three. Fantastic. Yeah. Oops. And then they installed it in this parquet. Okay. Yeah. It's the little lovely. girl. The little girl had a tragedy, and mm -hmm. uh, she's no longer with us. Oh. And, and so the community did this. That's a beautiful thing to do. So it looks like there's a garden in front of her as well. There is, yeah. It's really pretty. So mm -hmm. that they also got together and made these butterflies. Yep. And the the, the mural is going to go above the flower garden right there. You see it by the fence. Yes. And does that mean that that has to be waterproof? And oh yeah. So the board, the panel that I painted on is aluminum, and it has. Okay. A it has a um, a coating that's baked on the front and the back. And it's only about a, not even an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch thick. It's very thin, but it's strong. And the the, the aluminum panel has, has a, a, a white painted enamel coating on both sides. So the okay. side that I painted on, I lightly sanded it. Mm -hmm. And then I used an exterior paint. And uh, then I clear coated it with a UV protection after. And they also, the city of Toronto, mm -hmm. made this frame and then put a clear plastic um, glass over it, I guess you could say, like a glass, a plastic cover. Yep, cover, yes. And it's still there. It's been, a, I guess, about, boy five, six years now, maybe. What a wonderful remember. project to be part of. Mm -hmm. So your palette is not limited to oil paints and acrylics. It's no, anything. Yeah. No, not at all. This is a portrait, family portrait that I was asked to do just before COVID. So okay. again, this is the beginning. Yep. So I painted the canvas, the that, you know, fleshy color. Mm -hmm. And I did my drawing with acrylics. So this whole thing is in acrylic. Mm -hmm. And now I'm adding color to it. This is all oil paint. Right. What a project. How many portraits? Six portraits. <laughs> Only <Yeah>. one. <laughs> mm -hmm. Six individual portraits. Oh, wow. Here, here it comes developing. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's my layout. Mm-hmm. And now I'm adding color and tones, leaning towards the red. Now I'm lightening it up and darkening little bits here and there, mm -hmm. getting, the ha getting the hair going, adding more detail in the faces and in the clothing. I'll mm -hmm. use, I'll use, ma I'll use masking tape anywhere I can just to protect. Okay. protect things. Mm -hmm. And that's finished. How about that? So that's going in their pool room or something like that. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Really, the the man in the on top, he's the dad. Yes. The, the lady on the left in the scarf is the mom. Yeah. And these are four children. And that you've captured a really outdoorsy feel there, so they look like yeah. they're really hiking or. They just finished cutting down a Christmas tree. Oh okay. Yeah. And the portrait of the man in the middle. His name's Kevin. This mm -hmm. is. This is not the picture of him from this day. This is a different picture from something else. So I plopped it in because he liked that. He liked his hair better in this picture. Okay, <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah, the day the, the the tree was cut down, his hair wasn't as pretty as it is. <laughs> I don't know. Fair enough. Yeah. It wasn't the, it, he wasn't happy with it. So um, that's, a, well, here's another really quick one. This is kind of how... The beginning of this one looked just blocking mm. it, blocking in the colors. There's my sketch. Oops. And now I'm so really how did you decide to you've got the background going quite diagonal there? It's really effective. But how did you decide to take that approach? I don't know. It just <laughs> just intuitive. <laughs> yeah. 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 Wow, all those details of the dress mm -hmm. and yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's oh one more here. That's the last one here. Okay, so now the whole canvas is gray. I've got my drawing done. I've mm -hmm. taped everything out. It's very tiny. 
background up at the top above the masking tape. There and the bottom, the, the water and the above the water. Mm -hmm. Now I'm doing the uh, H dock. timber. <laughs> yeah, piece of timber. Each piece of timber with its own personality. Yeah. So you've got a lovely balance of cools and warms in there as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you thinking in that kind of process as you go through balancing the warm? Um, and yeah. Yeah. As I go, I, and then I'll, the next day I'll come back and I'll say, oh, it's missing something. And I'm just leaning towards something else. And so I'm using a lot of masking tape here mm -hmm. to, to make sure everything stays neat and tidy. Now that almost looks airbrushed, but it's oils, is it? It is oils, yeah. yeah. You're getting such a smooth finish. Yeah, there. and you can once it's if it's all taped off, mm -hmm. and each each piece, they're similar. They're all very much the same, but okay. they're different. So when I'm when I'm working on one piece. That's all I'm doing is that one stick. The one stick of, of timber. Yeah. And then I look at the next stick and I'm following, I'm trying to follow the photograph as well. Right. And that's it. Each piece, you just focus one piece at a time. And when you're finally done and you take all the tape off. There it, looks, it is. It looks really, really neat. Right. You have to do it so, that way. Cause if you don't, if I don't do it, if I don't do it this way, it doesn't look as <laughs> sharp. It really looks sharp. You've, look, yeah. on this subject matter, um, I understand you've done a series with the deck chairs. Oh, man, so, yeah. I've been called the deck chair guy or the well, canoe. Well, can you tell us about the inspiration behind the deck chairs? Well, the story, my, there's got to be a story. <laughs> there is. So my <laughs> wife and I, when we got married, we went up north which is three hours away from home. Mm -hmm. Oops, I just lost what I was doing. Hold on just a moment. Yikes. Okay. And the very, let me see if it's here. I don't know. Ah, there they are. I can see them. A bunch of them, but that's mm. the original one that I first, I've done a bunch, but the original, oh, there it is. There it is. I think that's the one, the very first one. No, no. The very first one isn't here. But that's right. okay. It looks very much like Can this. you show us some of the other deck chairs? Yeah, sure. So there's this one. So there's that they're having a conversation by the look of it. Yeah. Yeah. That's what this is called. Conversation peace. Okay, peace. there you go. And and the, the word spell peace is P-E-A-C-E. -E. It does look very peaceful. Uh-huh. Conversation peace. And so See it looks like I'm... story is very much at the front of your mind when you're, you're mm -hmm. creating these works. Yeah. So I was a member of a photography club for two years, and all I did was show up and sit and listen. I wow. said nothing. I said I was friendly with everybody, but yes. I didn't. I didn't do anything. I just watched as they shared their slideshow. And so with this one, that looks like the original deck chairs you showed us, but from a different perspective. Yeah. And this time you're not focusing so much on the chairs, but what the people in the chairs are looking at. Mm -hmm. And would Is you it... encourage people to work in series? Yeah. Yeah. I have a friend. All he does is winter. That's okay. it. Just winter pictures. And when you see his picture, it's you know it's his. It, you mm. just you just know this is his picture, and um, he told me so many times, Olaf, you should just do a series, just paint the same thing all the time. I said, No, no. <laughs> that would make me crazy. This is a large one, five by seven foot. I painted it during the Formula One race in Montreal on the weekend. Okay. Right. I, had, I had a show at a little storefront nearby. Mm -hmm. I painted this one outside on the sidewalk. 
I built a, <laughs> I built a uh, easel and wow. uh, stuck the canvas up there and nailed it to the easel so it wouldn't blow away and had a great time painting that. Yeah, in, public, I, in public, when people watch, I just, this one's a little blurry. I don't know why. It's my kids. Oh, did, look at that. <laughs> yeah. I, I did this fairly quickly. But you haven't actually um, gone for the traditional portrait sitting nicely. You've gone for capturing their characters, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. I think portraiture is too serious. Too have some, serious. Have some fun. I mean, I've, <laughs> some of the masters, their face, they look like they're angry. Like, give her something to do or something. Look at Mona Lisa, how sad she looks. So this one is my daughter. Mm -hmm. She was in contemplation that day, and I happened to have my camera handy. And I said, don't move. <laughs> Stephanie, <laughs> don't move. I like the light. Mm. The light is really provocative there. Yeah. yeah. And she's in deep thought. Yes. And this is just, I was playing around. I like the sweater. Mm, beautiful. And the, the thoughtful expression. Yeah. Oh, this is great. It was Justin, my son. Mm -hmm. He was playing at the park and he took my hat. So I said, okay, if you're going to take my hat, let me take a picture. And I took that one. And, and you're right. It just adds a whole new dimension to a portrait, yeah. doesn't it? To add something mm -hmm. fun to it. Mm-hmm. I go all, I, oh, we saw that one already. I go all out to have fun. <clears throat> if it's not fun, I don't want a, any part of it. Mm, look at this. But, yeah. Can you explain this one to us a bit more? It's a, it's a little Inuit boy. And mm -hmm. uh, I can't imagine how it is for him. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so, so many unanswered questions, but I love the detail in the, in the fur and the emotion in his eyes. You've really captured that expression for sure. Mm -hmm. So that is quite cropped in as well. Yeah, um, yeah. Is Absolutely. cropping part mm -hmm. of your process? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes background is unnecessary. Take it away. You don't need it all. Mm. Except it's here. Look at that. You need the background. Uh, <laughs> absolutely. So one of my friends... Um, He's a photographer. His dad has this little uh, studio in the back of the house in Italy. And he's a rip shoe shoemaker. And um, I, I wanted to just do it in sepia because of everything it stands for. I just love that picture. It's great. And the light is, is perfect mm -hmm. coming in there from, through the windows. Yeah. There's so probably not many people like him around now. It's people throw their shoes yeah. out these days. Yeah, yeah. So that was very time consuming. And when I, um, oops, I had this painting for so long mm -hmm. that nobody wanted to buy it. And I did a workshop. I went, I attended a workshop in Tennessee and my instructor said to me what do you mean you, you can't sell that picture I said yeah I can't it seems like I can't even give it away he said you're showing in the wrong gallery right that I took that workshop that workshop lasted five days mm -hmm. and that was the big takeaway that oh, well, what happened next so did you well, find I sent it to a yeah I found another gallery mm-hmm and they sold it for way, way more money than I was originally asked. I see. That's great to hear. Yeah. So that's really good advice. Mm -hmm. There's a there's a saying that I learned after I read the book The Artist's Way. Mm -hmm. Let your hook always be cast. It'll be in a pond. A fish will be in a pond where you least expect. So I invite no. When the, when a gallery says no, that's okay. Next, next, next. Keep going until you find one. So this is just another. It, I'm looking at it now. This is an old one. Um, Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and it's so different to your sepia one just before. Yeah, yeah. 
it has less detail and looking at it now it's not finished <laughs> i gotta take it back and finish work on it some more so just on that if you go back to that page, yeah, sure. uh -huh. um how would you what kind of palette did you have for that what kind of paints did you squeeze out to you to create that oh well the, the primaries mm, clearly yeah so do you have a uh, palette with lots of colors or just a few that no, you mix together? I've recently changed to a limited palette of just the yellow, the, the yellow, red, and blue, black, mm. white. I also use purples and I mix all the other colors myself. Okay. Just the three colors. So, but here I, I was using a big palette up until I recently. Love the, um... I love this, the shape of that. It's that kind of shape, the one before. Yeah, it's that um, circular shape. It's just amazing. Oh, yeah, the background there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. the whole thing, yeah. I love it to leaves your eye, take your a eye palette, on. Your palette knife and just kind of scratch. This this teal or this um, champagne color is really neat too. It is, yes. And this is another oil painting. So sweet. It's, five, it's 60 by 60 inches. Wow. And how did you create that dappled light in the background? Oh, you just um, make a small circle and, and just do a whole bunch of them. And, and with a dry brush, just make circles. Okay. Keep cleaning. You heard it here first. <laughs> yeah, keep keep cleaning the brush. Um, if I was to redo this, if I was to have this painting back, I would change the background. I don't like it right now as I look at it. It's a mm -hmm. fairly old painting, but um, photography in the background it always shows circles. You know, in in general, if there's light in the back, mm -hmm. the, the camera picks up circle rings. Well, as a painter, we don't paint. I was taught, don't paint those. Okay. Don't paint. A painting should look like a painting, not a reproduction of a photograph. A painting should look better than the photograph. Mm. Don't paint the circles that the camera makes. And I'm glad you said that because I thought I was the only one that looked back and thought, you know, I would do that completely differently now, but you're saying the same thing. Yeah. So it's beautiful. The hair, I had fun doing that. The light on the hair is is quite uh -huh. um, you know, just makes that painting. It's beautiful. Yeah. All the movement and yeah. There's that other one again. Mm -hmm. this oh was fun. wow! It looks I, like fun. I love bubbles. I think children and bubbles go hand in hand just like peanut butter and jam. Mm, not so much in Australia, but I'll take your word for it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, chocolate cookies and milk. <laughs> okay, that one I'll accept. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so really, you're having fun is a big part of your work. You, you know, oh, you're... yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> absolutely. Trying new things. Oh, mm -hmm. now that is sensational. The, that one is a large one. It's 40 by 60. Mm -hmm. inches. It's almost four feet by five feet. And so he's dancing and he's trying to imitate a bear. Okay. Always a story. And you've just captured that moment too. There's a mm -hmm. captured moment. The feathers are in the right place. It's, it's yeah. fabulous. The feathers on his on this headpiece, they're not feathers. They are porcupine quills. Really? Yep. Well, I've learned something. I, yeah, me too. My daughter-in-law told me that a few weeks ago. I was at another powwow, and Jennifer told me that. She says, yep, those are porcupine quills, and it takes a special person to make those, mm. and um, they, they can't be thinking anything negative while they're making the headdress. Okay. They have, put, they have to put it down, and those are, um, e I think those are eagle feathers in his hand okay. attached to a bone of some sort. A bone, yeah. 
Awesome. Wonderful. That's what I love about the indigenous people up here. It's they're the first people in Canada. I just love that. And they're mm -hmm. still here. And I'm sad about what all happened to them and the, you know, but they're very happy living the life they live. And I'm just, I just love, love, love them. Ever since I was a kid, I was fascinated by the fact that they live outside, mm -hmm. they eat they, what they hunt they and grow. And how can anybody do that? Fascinating. I'm totally fascinated. Yeah. Like, and it's so dynamic and, and colorful mm -hmm. there what they're so wearing this, yeah this is a picture i love to paint i just loved it it's so moody mm -hmm. and what what was the mood you're trying to capture there the light or the not so much the light just compassion mm. it's very soft mm -hmm. my friend went to italy and and took these photos and let me use them that's so dynamic I love that piece. So it's a lot of warm colors, but I can see quite a few cools popping up there. Yeah, in the diamonds. Mm. In the purples. Oh, yeah, That's you can see it as you zoom in there. Yeah. It's and did you do a series of those or is that? Uh, yeah, not too, too many. I still have them. <laughs> Except oh, this there you go. One, yep. This one, this one sold. It's a mm -hmm. 40 by 40 sold to a designer actually and what are we looking at like to, right down the bottom there there's a building that's a, a a picture that was printed on some kind of a shield on her chest on the, okay. on the cost. i know i i almost didn't put it in but i thought and eh, why not oh and yeah she was just happy really happy i like the way you've got the um very soft edges on the left hand side and then the red and white scarf is quite harder edges mm. well that so i painted the whole this is 36 by 60 and um the whole thing is airbrushed except for the the scarf on the right hand side i used um uh, acrylics and a brush because i couldn't get it sharp enough with an airbrush okay. and 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 it it almost looks disturbing when you see it but um there's some things that i would change about it now and maybe try and soften this up in the front or sharpen up the face a little bit i don't know or sharpen up the scarf on the left hand side a little but bit more but it just I'm captures the the happiness and the the, the expression is brilliant. It's beautiful. Yeah. So what you're telling us is don't limit yourself to one medium. Go for it. Do, do yep. multiple mediums. Sure. Who says it's wrong? <laughs> There's another one. A little blurry. Bad quality. So we've probably got time for just a couple more, and then I'll ask a few questions, and our time will be up. I'm not sure which ones to show you. I did some glass. That was fun. Oh, wow. Look at uh, that. People say, how do you do glass? Just do the dark stuff and the light stuff, and then the stuff in the middle will come together. This was that, crazy. That was nuts. That's. Can I see that again? That's just <laughs> the sort of thing that's amazing, just the detail. Yeah. You really got to squint when you're working on something like that. I want to do a re... I I want to redo this is only 40 by 40 i want to redo it really big wow it, yeah and you're not thinking rock by rock there you're actually thinking of colors and tones and highlights yeah. well you got to separate them somehow so the rock by rock i, I haven't said that to myself but yeah mm -hmm. that's basically each piece mm -hmm. and do that once the drawing is done you're just time consuming get back to it every now and again this is an older one. Oh, it's blurry. Never mind. Um, this is kind of fun. Really, really um, abstract. Mm, it is. Looking in the windows. Oh, this was one of my favorites. This took forever. Now, Ever. is that a recent one or? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I just want to pick one. Isn't that? 
Awesome. I love that. Is that is amazing. Yeah. And, and your lovely complimentary colors there. Mm hmm. I won a contest with this. Okay. Yeah. And they, what was the story behind that one? Oh, just they were calling on paint a picture. They said, okay, artists, go ahead and do something representing horse racing for the racetrack. Mm -hmm. We have one of the leading race, world racetracks here, Woodbine. And okay. um, they have racetracks in all over the world and they all know one another. They all compete. Anyways, so I, I won first, first place with this image and then I got hooked for a little while and then I stopped. <laughs> <laughs> I go on these tangents. I get hooked on doing something like glass or. The uh, glass is lovely. It's clear that you don't limit yourself to any particular. There's those deck chairs. They're, they're back. Yeah, here's <laughs> another one. So you're not so, limiting yourself to a particular theme at all. You're really yeah. just exploring a whole lot of things. Mm -hmm. Oh, here's another one, step by step. I didn't realize it was, I put it in there. So the first, I painted the whole canvas with the light mm -hmm. gray, and then I yep. drew all the lines in. And up at the top left, you see I got started. And then I'll show you the next one. So there. That's quite an easel. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. That's my favorite thing and there it is finished mm -hmm. wow um, some some pointillism that's fun yes it would be i love pointillism i love that okay. i don't do enough of that so here's a commission um, oh. of these oh, dogs. How sweet. took a little while minus the hairdo <laughs> well it's four individual portraits isn't it <laughs> yeah portraits. It yeah. yeah. So they were sitting on a carpeted staircase and she wanted a wooden staircase. So I said, okay. Of course. <laughs> and that's that. Okay. Well, thank you so much for showing us all of that. That was okay. that was fascinating. Mm -hmm. Look, I do have one question here um, mm -hmm. from James and he sent that in earlier. Do you think your mural technique has carried over into your fine art or are they quite different processes? A lot of what I learned painting outside, I apply to my oil paintings. Okay. Not too often, but a little bit. A little yeah. bit, okay. So when we paint outside, so before, when I started working with these guys, um, when I was first trained back, back in early, the late 80s, um, I went and I worked at this outdoor advertising billboard company and these men that were painting the billboards were old enough to be my dad. A couple of them were old enough to be my granddad. And okay. these guys are just masters. Mm. They really are. And one of them is my mentor today. He's still, he's retired now, but I, I ask him questions and, um, I frustrate him sometimes, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so. So I learned what I learned there. And then when I started working outside with this other group of guys, they had mural painting down to a fine science. And so they paint, they put the base color on the wall and then paint color on top of that and then draw on top of all the base colors. Okay. Then you paint, like I showed you in my some of my step-by-steps, um, then they paint on top of that and mm -hmm. reform that. So I learned a lot out there with them and I applied it to my work now now yeah. okay do you find it more difficult to paint small or because you're used to painting epic yeah that cannot stand small small okay yeah all right and uh the last question I have for you is um what advice would you have for emerging artists who just want to move to a new level of competence ask don't be shy ask a lot of questions and be, remain teachable forever okay get, rid of, get over the shyness mm -hmm. it's just pride I kept my my pride kept me from learning so once I put my sh once I put my pride aside and said okay I'm just going to get become a, a student and ask right. real dumb questions mm -hmm. and I don't care I don't care what they think of me and some art some people who I ask kind of you know um they kind of sloughed me off 
but those who, who would answer my questions, I would gravitate towards them. And we formed a relationship like I have now with, with Ron, my friend and my mentor. And um, he's retired now. He does some painting at home, but I can go to him with anything and mm. ask. I'm so grateful for him. And that's why I'm here giving away what I got. Because I never want to be the red apple on the top of the tree. I want to okay. be, a, there's a story about the red apple mm -hmm. and, the, and the green apples. The whole tree was full of green apples, except the very top, there's one red apple. And he looked down his nose at everybody else and said, don't you all wish you were red like me? And they'd look up at him and say, we don't know what you're talking about. We're busy having fun and we're strong and we're vibrant. And he says, you just don't understand. It's so much better being so perfect like me. I'm big and red. And they just paid no mind to him. And one day it started to rain and the wind was blowing and the tree was shaking. And suddenly the red apple fell mm. to the ground and broke. And all the green apples were just like devastated. <laughs> and they're still on the tree, open-minded, teachable. And I prefer to work with teachable people mm -hmm. that are willing to receive information, whether they know it or not. Keep mm -hmm. an open mind because it'll be somewhere in that workshop, maybe the last 10 minutes, where you're going to learn something that changes your life. Like right. it did. Exactly. Precisely. Like it, has, like it has for me. Mm -hmm. I got to give it a way to keep it. They're great words. Terrific words. Well, look, on that point, um, Thank you so much for your time, Olaf. That has been a fascinating hour. I've really enjoyed it. Um, and if anyone who's watching would like to join Olaf's group or find out more about what Olaf's mentoring can do for you, uh, head over to masterius.com and uh, have a look at his work there and maybe join up or ask more questions. And we hope to see you all in a couple of weeks in Olaf's mentoring group. So thank you, Olaf, and thank you so um, very it's, much, been, it's been great, and we'll see you all later. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.